Pretty recently, Star Wars has had a bit of a resurgence in the psyche of gamers and geeks all over the world. I mean, we've had The Force Awakens, Episode 8 and 9 are out soon, and we're also getting spin-offs like Rogue One, possibly a Boba Fett and a Yoda origin story. Star Wars is pretty much the king of sci-fi right now, and it's good to see it in such a good state, compared to how it was with the prequels. I think we can all agree that the prequel films were pretty bad, but there were some good video games that came from it, for example, Star Wars Battlefront 2, or Pod Racing, and there's one game which I remember very fondly as a child, but probably isn't that good overall, but I'm going to see if it holds up today, and that is Star Wars Episode 1 The Phantom Menace, the video game for PlayStation 1. I have some really fond memories of this game, but I'm pretty sure that might be my nostalgia talking, so with that said, let's have a look. I was very young when I played this game. The Phantom Menace film was launched on May 19th, 1999, a full 17 years ago when I was only 8 years old. Star Wars Fever was in full swing. I mean, Star Wars hadn't had a film release for 16 years, and so every magazine, TV channel, and kids' playground was buzzing with news of a new Star Wars film using cutting-edge CGI and modern film technology. Now, I've always been a big fan of Star Wars, and naturally this game was a big part of my childhood due to that fact alone. This was back in the days when Metal Gear Solid's blocky character models were the peak of graphical fidelity, and so this game looked right at home for modern graphics on the PlayStation. Okay, just booting up the menu. Oh look, there's some sort of music video. Okay, what's that about? At last we will reveal ourselves to the Jedi. At last we will have revenge. Oh, I see, it's one of those heavily downgraded trailers you'd see in old disc-based games. Well, music video is a bit of a stretch, guys, come on. Anyway, we play as many characters in this game, but start off as Obi-Wan Kenobi on the Trade Federation ship from the movie. In fact, beat for beat, this game is more or less just scenes from the film, with more padding to show how each character gets from A to B between scenes. Okay, we're in, and already we're in danger. The controls are very clunky. The best description for movement would be tank controls, with very awkward lightsaber combat, dodging and platforming. Also, for some reason the developers decided to put the game halfway between a top-down RTS view and an over-the-shoulder third-person view, resulting in enemies off-screen being able to target you whilst you try to figure out where you're being hit from. One of the cool things about this game is there are also a lot of NPCs which you can interact with, such as the droid from the starting room of the game. What is that gas coming out of the floor? It is excess steam from our troublesome ventilation system. And more often than not, you're allowed to kill civilians and enemy non-combatants with no repercussions. So in effect, I usually play this game like an early Grand Theft Auto experience. Ah! Don't hurt me. This invasion wasn't my idea. What are you doing here? I'm monitoring the power generators in the hangar bay. I must find a way to cut the door's power. No! Don't touch the power generator! <laughs> okay, Qui-Gon. I think it's time we left the ship. Or not. I guess we'll need to find another way out. Crap. I do like the environments in this game. Even in the first level, there are hidden areas of goodies and interactive buttons which do random things. Well, that was fucking pointless. And there are even places meant solely to add narrative depth to the world. Mm. Look out, lads, it's the droid army. All two of them. Board up your windows, get the Republic! I'm scared, Mum! Mummy! Okay, we got off the ship. And look, more lovely PS1-era cutscenes. They actually look pretty good with the droids and ships, etc., but... Uh, Obi-Wan looks a bit... weird. Okay then, next up's the Naboo Swamps. This level in particular throws a lot of platforming obstacles in your way, but the worst thing you'll have to deal with in this level is everyone's favourite Star Wars character. <sighs> Jar Jar. This is the second Bombad Jedi? Who are you? 
Hello, Daddy. Mr. Jaja Binks. Unfortunately, you can't kill him. Though, to be honest, Obi-Wan's lightsaber skills are... naff. But, if you leave him to the droids, they'll take care of him. Follow me, sir. You should do it right. <laughs> So yeah, after the swamp we then get to go to the Gungan homeworld, Utogongo, to rescue Jar Jar Binks and access a ship capable of getting Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan to the city of Feed. We need a navigator. Obi-Wan, you must find and rescue Jar Jar Binks. I'll find him, Master. Good. And Obi-Wan, do not hurt these Gungans. I sense that you look down upon them, but they are living beings nonetheless. Well... <laughs> I'll behave a little bit. I mean... A monster! Help me! Yeah, I... I'm trying my best. Right, now that we've got the tri-bubble bongo, we can make our way to feed. Let's go get the queen. Mr. Hill's big back and eggs! Ouch time! God's sake. Feed tends to have a lot of lever puzzles in order to progress with the platforming, but it's also dotted with tanks which for some reason take an unreasonable amount of punishment to kill. Run Obi-Wan! You've still got two terrible movies to be in! I am glad to see that you have survived. The Trade Federation has taken complete control of Feed. We must escort the Queen to safety. My respects, Your Highness. We have been sent by the Jedi Council to see you to safety. Ah, Your Highness. Okay, right. Let's get you out of here. The hangar is some distance from here. There's a passage underneath the palace. This way... We're cut off! Take the Queen and find another route. We'll meet at the hangar. Oh, screw that. I'll save you myself. Oh. Okay, okay. Change of plan. Let's regroup with Qui-Gon. Also, as a side note, there are some people you find along the way who need your help with various things, which really adds variety to your standard objectives of go here, go there, kill this, defend that. My leg is broken. I've been stuck here all day. Can you spare any water? I don't have any water. Wait here. I will try to find some for you. Hurry back! I don't know how long I can last! Yeah, fuck your water. Ah, we made it! Right, now that we've passed the blockade, we finally get to play on a new planet in the form of Tatooine. And this time, we get to play as Qui-Gon! Qui-Gon! So our goal as Qui-Gon is to find a T-14 hyperdrive generator in order to get the ship fixed to travel to Coruscant. Buy some hydroponic vegetables? Good day to you, stranger. How may I help? I'm looking for a T-14 hyperdrive generator. Well, Watto has more ship parts than anyone. Oh, thank you. That's very nice of you. <laughs> so this area of the game is... odd. We have to do lots of favours in order to get parts to trade with Watto in order to get the T-14. Excuse me, can you help me save my son? I'm busy! You must be here to rescue me! I was passing by and realized that she needed help. Thanks! Good day to you, stranger. How may I help you? Can you tell me how I can find Watto? Find Watto's servant, Anakin. He might be able to help you. Wait, Anakin? Have a nice day. Let me at him! Out of my way, Shmi! You're the killer. I won't help you. <laughs> Bit late, love. Finally, I can fix all of this. I can stop the prequels from ever happening. I can fix the Star Wars timeline. Let's get him. Let's get the little bastard. Oh. Right. Okay, now that we've got the T-14, we need to attend the pod race before we leave. Let's just get tricked by Jabba. Kill Jabba. 
Oh, really? Sort out Anakin's pod fault, and then we get to see the race. Well, sort of. The racers are ready. And they're off. They're coming up to the final lap, so Bobo still has the lead. With Skywalker gaining ground. Skywalker is right behind Saboba! Their car races are tangled! They're not gonna make it! Skywalker pulls free! Saboba has crashed! Skywalker wins! Let's take that hyperdrive unit from Watto and leave this planet. Thrilling. Okay, let's get out of here. I've had enough of Tatooine. Come along, Anakin. Your destiny awaits. Oh look, I was wondering when you'd show up. Now we battle! The game's not very good at this part. It's kind of clumsy and, well, very short. But with that done, we now move on to Coruscant. Hey, we get to play as Panaka. You know, you know the guy from Holby City? The actor, actor who played him was in Holby... No? no? He, he was in Holby City. Yeah. Anyway, this level's stupid. One word, binoculars. Hello, friend. Uh, can I help you? I'm trying to sell these electro-binoculars. They aren't stolen, are they? You fucking racist! No, I am the legal owner of these electro binoculars, I assure you. Well, in that case, I'm willing to offer 100 Republic credits for the pair. Does that sound reasonable? No, I can't part with these for less than 200 credits. But there is one silver lining to this level. What a nice day for a ride in an air taxi. Yes, sir. It certainly is. Right, now it's time to go back to Naboo. Again. Man, these cutscenes don't get any more appealing, do they? Oh, we even get to play as Amidala, that's interesting. Her character is the worst to play as, though, because she has this stupid shotgun thingy, which is useless at killing enemies. But she does make up for this later on. You wanna fuck with me? Say hello to my little friend! <laughs> and now, our final challenge of the game presents itself. Darth Maul. Again. Sith warrior. This is most unexpected. Prepare to become one with the Force Jedi. And may Panaka keep going. We'll deal with this villain. So in this fight, we resume the reigns of Obi-Wan and even get Qui-Gon as backup. Or should I say, we bumble around in a platforming sequence whilst Qui-Gon sort of just stalls for time until we regroup. Then by the time we get to him, things go wrong. Die, Jedi. Die. No! I have killed your master and now it is your turn to die, young Jedi. Wow, he's just spoken more dialogue than he did in the bloody film. Bravo. Bravo. Poor Peter Serafinowicz. <laughs> yeah, got him. Wait, uh, is he still alive? Hey, uh, you okay there, man? I mean, I mean, I don't want, I don't want to just leave you here. I mean, I, I, I avenge my master and all, but uh... ah! yeah, okay. Master, you're injured. Yes, my Padawan. The Sith has struck a mortal blow. It's not pain. It's passed on. Obi Wan, you must train Anakin. Obi Wan, you are no longer my student. You have become a Jedi Knight. The Force will be with you always. 
And as a final reward for completing this game, we get to see the clay-faced cutscene characters celebrate their victory in emotionless contemplation. Nightmares. So there we have it everyone, Star Wars The Phantom Menace for PlayStation 1. This is probably by most accounts a really bad game, and some of you watching are probably thinking, Triple G, this looks rubbish, why do you love it? I can't really say for certain, but I'm pretty sure it's to do with nostalgia and being a massive Star Wars fanboy. I mean, I've always wanted to be a Jedi as a kid, and that was a really cool idea at the time, and the ability to go around the levels, swinging the lightsaber around, talking to NPCs and getting immersed in the world, no matter how clunky or tank controlly, it was great fun for me as a kid, and even playing it now, I have fond memories of certain parts of the games and NPCs and conversations like, what a nice day for a ride in an air taxi. For me, it's just quaint, I suppose. But with that said, I think it's a good game, but most people won't agree with me. But either way, thanks so much for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. What's this about? Hang on, guys. I gotta deal with something. Jason? Triple G. What are you doing here? I've been sent by the Jedi Council. Rumour has it you've been playing The Phantom Menace on the PlayStation 1. Hmm, well, uh, not typical Jedi attire, but... Anyway, the main thing is, I love The Phantom Menace in the video game. I hate the film, but to be honest, I mean, it's pretty good fun. I mean, there's lightsaber battles... Stop! Stop. It's a terrible game. It has tank controls. Jar Jar Binks. But I quite like the game, I mean, it's got good lightsaber battles, it's got a lot of story, level design that's pretty cool. Enough! Triple G, you're turning to the dark side. You're a threat to the Jedi Council. I'm gonna have to kill you. You're insane. But I will defend myself.